Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. This is about a video collaboration that I'm doing with Tammy Anderson or Art by Tammy in case you know her from her YouTube handle. And this is something we have planned out since November, I think. And we came up with the idea or she came up with the idea to make an ice and fire cave with materials that we want to use for this. And I agreed on it, I was super excited and then life just happened and it was always postponed and so. But finally we made it and we agreed that Tammy is the one on fire, so she's the one making the fire cave and I'm the cool dude making the ice cave. I already finished my piece yesterday, I filmed it in sunlight as usual for you to see it in the end of the video, but don't skip it, have a look at everything that I did because I was super excited about this project, it turned out really really cool. It has some different approaches to things that I did with other projects which might help you for your project as well. And yeah, share some love. Also have a look at Tammy's video of course, I cannot wait to see what she created and how she made it. I didn't have a look yet and I didn't even see a picture, so excited. Besides that I've put my result on my Etsy shop in case you want to adopt it or have a look at all my other pieces because it's only two weeks until our US trip so we're going to visit the US on a three week vacation we cannot wait to be there it's the first time ever and yeah if you want to support our trip there and want to give some of my paintings a new home on your walls very much appreciate it. So other than that enough talking for the intro enjoy watching the process of the ice cave making I hope you got inspired trying something like that yourself. If so, make sure to show me or tag me on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you post it. It really was fun to make. I love the result and cannot wait to hear what you think about it. So see you in the voiceover. Bye. As we agreed on being completely free, what to use for our projects, I already prepared some of the materials that I think I will use and arranged them here on my working desk. First out you can see my canvas that I am working on. It is a 50 by 50 centimeter canvas. It is a reused one. I tried some new crackling effects on there as you can already see through. It failed for the first attempt as I had to get a feeling for the paints themselves. So I painted with black over it. It again cracked a bit but it doesn't worry me for this project ahead. But this is the reason why you can see some gold lacing through the black layers. Besides that for sure I'm going to use some plaster and this is just regular plaster from the hobby market or craft market. So nothing special, nothing really artisty, just the regular stuff. Going to mix this with water and creating my ice cave with it. At least I think I will make it so. <laughs> Other than that I do have some smaller and larger glass nuggets which I might use or might not use. I do have some of these crystals from Resonate or whatever other brand you can get them from. They might come handy as well for ice crystals or such. <laughs> not sure yet as well. I do have some glitters arranged because glitters always work. <laughs> I have some acrylics to paint my cave in the end. And I also have some well, not really sure how they are called, uh, some kind of flakes, uh, smaller and larger ones, which Leslie has sent over to me along with her color art pigments. So I didn't have the chance to use them yet, but they might come handy as well in the final steps of the ice cage. We will see. And this is basically everything that I'm going for this time. So I do not plan to add any pigments into the resin itself in the end. I want to make this more like a sealed painting an abstract what whatsoever you want to call it painting ice cave ish thingy <laughs> so but let's start with the beginnings i mixed up my plaster and added it on the canvas using my fingers and spreading it around making the initial design of the ice cave of course i had something in mind in which direction i wanted to make this work but i was not sure at this point if it's going to work out as i intended but I at least knew that I want to give it some texture, I want to give this a three-dimensional look and to create the depth in the end, which really worked out. So it took me some time to manipulate the plaster onto the canvas to form the shapes that I wanted to have. 
And of course, if you have worked with plaster again, there is a point where it really thickens up and you cannot really move it that good anymore. And I approached this time quicker than I hoped to, so I had to let it stay, mix another batch of my plaster and edit a second layer to get the texture and all the stuff that you can see in the video footage here as well. But it was super fun, I loved it, and in case you are not happy with the design, you can yeah, model the plaster anyway. So if you have some sculpting tools and such, you can manipulate it, even if it hardens. So you can yeah, scrape things off or add things to it, whatever you like. But I was pretty much happy with the result that I got, because it looked like a natural ice cave. Of course there was no shading, so it was a bit of imagination required at this point, but you will see in the next step when everything is going to be painted with pure acrylics. The acrylics themselves are not mixed with anything that is just pure from the tube. It's a dark blue, so tail blue and a white, only these two colors, and I made all the shading with this. It took two or three layers at some parts to get the effect that I wanted, and yeah, then it was pretty much fine. The good thing is that you can tweak it as often as you'd like. So as these acrylics are in thin layers, you can paint over them and retone everything. And especially on projects such as this one, don't be afraid of texture. So even if you have thicker layers of your paint and you will see some brush strokes and texture through in the end, this totally adds to the piece in this case. So as it's a natural formation, so an ice cave, and this is not really super smooth melted whatsoever, there are always some stuff in the walls, in the ground, whatsoever, so texture really does not hurt here. When my acrylic painting layer was dry and I liked the design that I achieved here, I had to step back for a couple of times and watch it from more distance just to see if it really gives me a cave look, if it looks good for the entire design, if the composition is okay, if the cave is dark enough, if the surrounding areas are too light or too dark, if I have to change things. This for me worked better when I had to step back for a couple of meters, have a look from distance, go out of the room and return after half an hour and have a look at it again. So this brings stuff more into perspective for me. And as it worked, it was time to care for the texture. And the question now was how to make this work and fix it onto the painting. The idea that I came up with was some modeling paste or structure paste, whatever it's called in English. And I just mixed it with blue acrylics to make it fit the color scheme and added it to the canvas. The good thing is, as this paste is going to dry, it is going to glue everything pretty much together and shouldn't be so obvious that I used it on the canvas because it just gives more texture and, you know, it just worked perfectly. 
I put it in larger amounts on the canvas, put all the crystals and glass stones and all the stuff that I wanted to add there in it. So pressed it just in there to make it stick and let it cure until the next day so that everything is really completely hardened and yeah, not red anymore. Because if the paint is still wet and you add a resin over it, you never know if this will ever cure or if this will stay wet forever, if it messes with the piece in the end. Just didn't want to risk it, so I let it sit until the next day. I also used some of my cracking paint. I still had some of the blue one left and added it towards the lower part of the painting, like a cracked up entrance towards the cave. Um, it didn't really have the exact color as the painting itself, so you can see that's a different color. I could have painted over it in the end, but this would have hidden the cracks a bit more, so I just let it be. Who tells that eyes have to be the same color throughout the entire cave? So I was fine with it. To give me some more highlights on certain areas, especially the high texture ones, I used some pure acrylic on a large flat brush and just dipped it over there, so just or dragged it over there, just to get some highlights on the yeah, bumps of the texture, which worked really great and gives you the more realistic look in the end. But this, of course, is just optional. You really do not have to do this if you don't like it. I also grabbed some of the flakes that I got from Leslie. I picked the larger ones and the small ones, added them on the right side of the canvas, so where the light is coming through through the cave, and on the upper part, because this kind of lacked a bit of interest. It looked kind of cool, but there was not so much happening. So I just put some of this there, some glass nuggets and some small mica flakes, just to give it more variation to look at and, you know, just to have it sparkle everywhere. <laughs> and then there's a tip in case you wonder how you can fix these thing on your canvas so that they really stay in place. Well, you can use resin to fix them, but my choice for the resin was for a later stage, so I didn't use any resin until now. And a good thing that you can do is just mixing them with a varnish or putting some drops of varnish over them. Because this is great as the varnish is going to dry clear and it glues everything perfectly to the surface to not move anymore when you add the resin layer and such. It also worked great for the glass crystals on the upper left part of the painting because they were just sitting on there. I didn't use the structure paste for them, so I just placed them on there dripped some of the varnish over there, let it dry, so it's not visible in the end anymore, and everything was perfectly glued in place. This works just brilliant. I also used this method in a later stage, which you can see in a couple of minutes when I'm done with the airbrush. You know, when you have these paintings and do not want to have glitter everywhere, but you want to use resin, there are some workarounds that you can go to not mix too many pigments into your resin itself. Because even if you have clear resin and some resin mixed with pigments or glitters, if you add them to your piece and warm it up for releasing the bubbles, you really never know what the resin itself is going to do, how much the pigments are going to spread, if the glitter ends up in areas that you really do not want to have glitter in, if such a thing exists. <laughs> But yeah, I really needed it to be more controlled here. And my approach here was using my regular varnish and adding the glitter into this. Because this can be mixed, it can be applied with a brush to the areas that you want it to have and then just let it dry and everything will be perfectly in place. And if you add the resin over it afterwards, nothing will lift off, nothing will change, no pigments are going to flow to areas they are not supposed to be. This is something really working great. I used it with white glitter for the area where the sun is or the light is hitting into the cave. So I just painted over there, spread it on the rays of light that you can see here with a brush. I also mixed up some different shades of blue glitters and added them to the dark sides and the medium dark sides <laughs> of the cave just to make it glitter as well, as if some light is still hitting the cave and that is sparkled, because it's still ice, you know? And yeah, I added this to areas where I just want to have some sparkle in the end when the light hits it, when the sunlight hits it, and you can see it in the end as well when I filmed it. 
So for you, if you ever have something in mind where you want to have glitter in particular areas where you do not want to have it moved in the end, this is a perfect way to go for and it's way quicker than making perhaps a first layer of resin with mixing your pigments, painting it there, letting it dry until you can add the next layer because the varnish dries in a couple of minutes when you use the hair dryer and the resin, it has its curing time, you know. And when all of this was completely dry and I liked the result, I only had the task at hand adding the resin. For me this was the easiest part this time because it was just a clear resin, there was no pigments, no glitters, no nothing in there. So it was just coating everything with a layer of resin. I mixed about, I think it was 350 milliliters something of the Mastercast and added it to the piece and spread it around everywhere to have everything covered. It is not completely even covered. So there are areas with a thicker layer of resin, areas with a thin layer of resin and even some gaps where I didn't get to get any resin in or which was just repelled from the surface because of height difference and such. But anyways, although it would really bump me for a regular acrylic pour painting which I have resined, it didn't really affect me here because it even adds more structure and if there is a small area which is not shiny because there is no thick resin layer over it, it even adds more to the piece in my opinion. And you can see it as well when I filmed over it. But bottom line, in the end, I really, really liked how this one turned out. It has a spiking cool contrast between the dark and the light areas. It has cool effects when you go on closer because of the crackling paint and the glass and the crystals and everything that is on there. I really, really enjoyed this and I'm glad I picked the ice cave. I did have some ideas for a fire cave as well, but I really cannot wait to see what Tammy came up with with her fire cave. And I so much look forward to see your video. So again, make sure to have a look at your video as well. I'm going to link it in my video description. If you liked the video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and share with everyone you might think want to see it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already and make sure to have a look at some of my other videos as well. There is a playlist called Awesome Results. I bundled all my coolest things in there. So perhaps you'd like to start with this one. If you want to get in touch with me, my social media is linked down below, my Etsy shop as well. The product links that I've used you can find there as well in case you want to recreate something like this. I look forward to reading your comments. And other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day. Bye bye.